the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, the Ceylon Electricity Board has put forward a proposal to the Public Utilities Commission of Sri Lanka to reduce electricity tariffs, indicating a potential relief for consumers nationwide. New report unveils urgent connection between global debt crisis and climate change challenges as policymakers convene at the 2024 IMF World Bank meetings. On the final trading day of the week, the Colombo Stock Exchange recorded slight gains for the second day in a row. And a survey reveals the Eurozone business activity stagnated again this month with demand declining domestically and internationally despite minimal price increases by firms. From Studio 24, here's Sanuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening and thank you for joining us. The Ceylon Electricity Board has announced its proposal to the Public Utilities Commission of Sri Lanka aimed at reducing electricity tariffs, signalling a move that could provide relief to consumers across the country. The Ceylon Electricity Board has submitted a proposal to the Public Utilities Commission of Sri Lanka to reduce electricity tariffs based on the current pricing formula. This initiative aims to alleviate the financial burden on consumers amid rising costs of living. The exact percentage reductions in electricity tariffs will be determined by the PUCSL following a thorough review and approval process of the CEB's proposal. This step is critical in ensuring that any adjustments align with regulatory standards and market conditions. Notably, this marks the third time in 2024 that the CEB has sought to lower electricity tariffs. The repeated proposals highlight the board's commitment to making electricity more affordable for consumers while also responding to changing economic circumstances. As the process unfolds, stakeholders are keenly awaiting the PUCSL's decision which could significantly impact household and business budgets across the nation. As global policymakers gather for the 2024 IMF World Bank Group Annual Meetings, a new report by the Experts Review on Debt, nature and climate documents shed light on an urgent and intervened issue. This is the need to address the global debt crisis as a critical part of tackling climate change and environmental degeneration. Commissioned by the governments of Colombia, Kenya, France and Germany, the report underscores a triple crisis driven by unsustainable debt levels, environmental loss and escalating climate change. This analysis highlights how each of these elements feed into and exacerbates the others, creating a compounding effect that has profound economic and social implications, especially for nations most vulnerable to debt and environmental risks. One central finding of the report is that the debt sustainability analysis conducted by IMF and World Bank are inadequate in addressing this triple crisis. The report also outlines a vicious circle in which countries face significant environmental and climate-related risk are forced into cycles of borrowing to cover disaster response and climate adoption cost. At the same time, the report highlights a potential virtuous circle of environmentally sustainable and inclusive growth which could be achieved if domestic policy efforts are matched by strong international financial support. To improve the current approach, the report offers key policy recommendations suggesting that the DSAs should incorporate the projected impacts of climate change, taking into account both rapid onset disasters like floods and storms and slow onset impacts such as droughts and ecosystem degradation. Another recommendation is to integrate risk associated with nature loss such as biodiversity decline into debt assessments. <laughs> The gem and jewellery industry is seeing declining export demand due to high tariffs and ongoing geopolitical instability, raising concerns about its future. The gem and jewellery industry in Sri Lanka is grappling with significant challenges as high income taxes and a focus on regulation by the National Gem and Jewellery Authority hinder export growth. According to Atwad Dean, former president of the Sri Lanka Gem and Jewelry Association, the situation has become untenable, with heavy VAT and taxes placing a considerable burden on legitimate exporters. Dean noted that 70% of the industry's exports consist of foreign goods not consumed locally, primarily aimed at tourists. Tourists account for 18% of foreign currency sales, but the high costs exacerbated. Tourists account for 18% of foreign currency sales, but the high costs exacerbated by an additional 21% charge are driving them to seek alternatives in markets like Bangkok, Hong Kong, and Dubai, where taxes are significantly lower. 
Moreover, the presence of foreign nationals, including Chinese, Indians, Ukrainians and Israelis in the gem trade complicates the landscape. Many engage in unofficial transactions circumventing taxes and regulations, which puts legitimate dealers at a disadvantage. Dean expressed hope that the new government will address these issues and implement necessary reforms to support the industry, which is crucial for the country's economy. The Sri Lanka USA Business Council has re-elected Charita Hetiarachi, CEO of Ruchi Plantation Company, as president for 2024-25 during its 8th annual general meeting. The council aims to expand partnerships with USAID, the Export Development Board, EDB, and the Board of Investments, BOI, to better support Sri Lankan businesses. Heti Arachi highlighted key initiatives from the past year, including sessions on U.S. visitor visas and participation in the Select USA Investment Summit. U.S. Ambassador to Sri Lanka, Julie J. Chung, emphasized the U.S. government's commitment to Sri Lanka's economic growth and encouraged private sector investments in key areas. The Council continues to focus on strengthening trade relations, particularly in agriculture. Let's take a short break now. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. In the last trading day of the week, the Colombo Stock Exchange experienced modest gains for the second consecutive day. The All Share Price Index rose, indicating a steady upward trend. Similarly, the S&P and SL20 Index also climbed, reflecting positive investor sentiment and confidence in the market's performance. Now, to give us the insights, let's connect Manusha Kandanarachi for First Capital Holdings. Thank you. The Colombo Bourse sustained the bullish momentum for the second consecutive session as high net worth and institutional investors maintain a positive sentiment on banking sector counters and conglomerates. The ASPI closed the week at 12,518, gaining 44 points, led by John Keels Holdings, Commercial Banks, LOLC, DFCC, Ceylon Tobacco Company, and Haley's, which emerged as the top positive contributors for the index. The S&P SL20 index also rose by 1.05% and closed the day at 3,759 for the day. Amidst the improved participation from high net worth and institutional investors, turnover stood at LKR 4.8 billion for the second consecutive day, marking a 95.1% increase from the monthly average standing at LKR 2.4 billion. Moreover, off-board transactions contributed 44.9% 44, 44 to the overall turnover. M meanwhile, the banking sector led the turnover by 58%, followed by the capital goods and material sectors jointly contributing 24% to the overall turnover. Top gainers for the day were Blue Diamonds Non-Voting, Nation Lanka Finance, Blue Diamonds Voting, Ceylon Printers and Tess Agro Non-Voting. Meanwhile, the top losers for the day were UB Finance, Tres Agro Voting, T Smallholder Factories, Abans Finance and Tel Lanka Hotels. The Colombo Stock Exchange experienced a mixed trend over the first three days of this week. But yesterday and today, it reflected an upward trend. This positive momentum signifies growing investor confidence in the market's outlook. Now, to give us the market summary for this week, let's connect Nethmi Fernando from First Capital Holdings. Thank you. The market commenced the week on a mixed sentiment as the ASPI was recorded in the red at 12,309 on the back of profit-taking. However, banking and insurance sectors witnessed buying interest whilst investors extended the positive sentiment towards the construction and plantation sectors too. The mixed sentiment continued towards midweek as investors were eager to book profits, leading the market to ease on the negative territory. Towards the latter part of the week, the market regained its positive momentum uh, as the ASPI reached 12,518 during the day, backed by increased positive sentiment. The turnover was recorded at LKR 4.8 billion during the day. Banking sector, consumer and blue chip stocks backed the revitalized bullish momentum. 
ASPI gained 1.7% during the week, whilst the turnover gained significantly by 218.4% during this week. Capital goods, food beverage and banking sector were the main contributors to the turnover this week. Gold prices eased today but were on track for a third straight weekly gain as investors sought the safe haven metal in the backdrop of rising geopolitical tensions. Spoke gold is 0.2% to $2,729.35 per ounce due to profit taking. Prices hit a record high of $2,759.37 yesterday and are up 0.3% so far in the week. U.S. gold futures fell 0.3% to $2,741.90. U.S. and Israel negotiators will further gather in the coming days to try to restart talks towards a deal for a ceasefire. Previous attempts to reach a deal have failed. Market analysts suggest that ongoing geopolitical tensions could keep demand for gold elevated, reinforcing its status as a safe haven. Investors will be closely monitoring the developments in ceasefire negotiations as any breakthroughs may influence future gold prices. Oil prices rose in Asian trade today and were headed for a positive week as persistent concerns over a worsening Middle East conflict kept a risk premium largely in pay. Brent oil futures expiring in December rose 0.4% to $74.70 a barrel, while West Texas intermediate crude futures rose 0.5% to $70.55 a barrel. Israel vowed to attack Iran over an early October strike, which kept traders on edge over an escalation in the conflict that could potentially disrupt supplies from the Middle East. Focus was also on U.S. attempts to broker a ceasefire, which so far appeared to have yielded few results. Brent and WTI futures were trading up between 1% and 2% this week, recovering some measure of steep losses lodged earlier in October. The Sri Lankan rupee has a slight depreciation against the US dollar today compared to yesterday. According to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, both the buying and selling rates for the US dollar have increased. Now let's take a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee is firing against other global currencies. A show break now. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back. Fitz Holidays is an up and coming name in the travel industry, a wing of Fitz Air. Known for its dependable aviation services, is proud to announce the launch of its newly revamped website. Fitz Holidays has launched a user-centric website aimed at enhancing the booking experience for modern travellers. Designed to provide a seamless, personalised and flexible approach to travelling planning, the new platform promises to be an invaluable resource for explorers around the globe. The website offers a diverse array of packages including flight and hotel combinations, curated tours and customised inquiries. The website offers a diverse array of packages including flight and hotel combinations, curated tours and customised itineraries. This comprehensive range caters to all types of travellers, from budget-conscious explorers to those seeking luxury experiences. With customizable itineraries, users can easily plan everything from quick getaways to extensive overseas adventures, ensuring that every trip is tailored to their unique preferences and needs. As travel continues to evolve, Fitz Holiday's new website is set to become the ultimate travel companion, making it easier than ever for individuals to embark on their journeys with confidence and convenience. Cargill's Bank has announced a significant expansion of its banking services with an additional 51 Cargill supermarket outlets now offering financial services. Cargill's Bank has announced a significant expansion of its banking services with an additional 51 Cargill's supermarket outlets now offering financial services. This move increases the total number of banking-enabled supermarkets from 479 to 530 across the country. 
leveraging Cargill's extensive island-wide retail network, this initiative aims to enhance financial inclusivity by bringing essential banking services closer to communities nationwide. Cargill's bank was the first in Sri Lanka to introduce agency banking, partnering with the Cargill's retail network to allow customers to manage their basic banking needs while shopping for groceries. The innovative Bank Wiley Shop service provides convenient access to essential banking functions including deposits, withdrawals and the collections of local and foreign remittances. This initiative is particularly beneficial for Sri Lankans in both rural and urban areas, making financial services more accessible to all. Epic Lanka, a pioneering force in the financial technology solutions and digital transformation in Sri Lanka, has once again established its leadership by the winning the prestigious Best ICT Company at the 26th National ICT Awards held last night. This event, organized by the British Computer Society Sri Lanka section, solidifies Epic Lanka's commitment to advancing digital and financial technology in the country. The annual event that recognizes exceptional contributors in Sri Lanka's technology sector and EPIC's victory highlights its dedication to innovation, reliability and growth within the ICT industry. This year marks the fifth time that EPIC has won the overall gold award. EPIC also won the highest number of accolades at the event and won the award for AI Technology of the Year. The company has won the highest number of awards in the history of the competition. Hilton Properties in Colombo are thrilled to announce two exciting culinary events in October 2024, celebrating Bavarian and Thai cuisine. Guests are invited to partake in these vibrant celebrations, each offering a unique cultural and culinary experience. Hilton Colombo is set to bring back its much-loved October Fest running from the 24th of October to the 2nd of November this year. This annual celebration promises an authentic Bavarian experience of both locals and visitors in the heart of Colombo. Guests can indulge in a lavish buffet featuring a variety of traditional dishes. These exclusive events are led by renowned chefs who will showcase their expertise in authentic Thai cuisine. Both events promise to deliver exceptional dining experiences, blending rich cultural traditions with exquisite culinary artistry. <laughs> Overseas Royalty Salon PLC has appointed Indrajit Vikramasinghe as an independent non-executive director on its board of directors, in accordance with the Colombo Stock Exchange's new listing rules on independent directors. The company also announced the retirement of Thissa Kumar Bandar Nayaka, who has served on the board for over 13 years. Vikramasinghe brings extensive experience to the role, having previously served as the director and CEO of Union Bank for more than nine years, retiring on the 15th of August with over 35 years of management experience across both financial services and the FMCG sectors. He has worked with various local and multinational companies. Established in 1980, Overseas Realty Ceylon PLC is a BOI-approved flagship company involved in investment, development and management of properties, including the iconic World Trade Center in Colombo and the Howlock City mixed-use development. Hera Apparel Holdings PLC has formed an exclusive long-term partnership with Authentic Brands Group to design, manufacture and sell rebook branded outwear in the UK and Europe, expanding their presence in the fashion market. The Hera Group has announced a collaboration with Freebok, merging its design, manufacturing and distribution expertise with the brand's iconic style. This partnership aims to deliver a high-quality, performance-driven outerwear collection tailored to the needs of today's consumers. With a focus on expanding Heller's presence in the athleisure and active wear markets, this collaboration also opens the door for potential licensing agreements with other global brands. Focus Brands, the brand licensing division of the Heller Group, will serve as Reebok's exclusive brand management partner in the UK and Europe for the outerwear product category. The extensive range will feature outdoor jackets, soft shells, bonded fleeces and padded jackets for men, women and children. These products will be available through specialty retailers, department stores and e-commerce platforms throughout the region, ensuring accessibility for a wide audience. Let's take a short commercial break. Global business updates coming on the other side. This is the Nightly Business Report.
Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Most Asian stocks remained range-bound today, lacking immediate trading cues. Japan shares in particular fell ahead of a highly anticipated general election this weekend. Market sentiment towards Japan was further unsettled by repeated government warnings about potential currency market interventions as the yen approached three-month lows. Soft inflation data added pressure to the yen, influencing investor sentiment. Regional markets took mixed cues from a mildly positive close on Wall Street, where U.S. stocks continued to grapple with losses for the week. In Asian trading, U.S. stock index futures steadied as attention shifted to a series of upcoming earnings reports from major technology companies next week. The Nasdaq and the S&P 500 increased thanks to Tesla's positive earnings forecast. However, stocks have retreated from record highs amid concerns over Federal Reserve rate cuts, rising Treasury yields and uncertainty ahead of the U.S. election. The Nasdaq and S&P 500 gained on Thursday, driven by Tesla's positive earnings forecast and despite other mixed corporate results. The Dow dipped a third of a percent. The S&P added two-tenths of a percent, and the Nasdaq climbed three-quarters of a percent. The yield on the benchmark 10-year Treasury note eased from a three-month high as traders reassessed their bets on the Federal Reserve's path of rate cuts. In earnings news, shares of Tesla posted their biggest single-day gain in over a decade, rising nearly 22 percent after the EV maker reported a robust quarterly profit and surprised investors with a prediction of 20 to 30 percent sales growth next year. Shares of Southwest Airlines lost 5.5 percent after earnings and after the company reached an agreement with activist investor Elliott Investment Management. UPS shares gained more than 5 percent after the parcel service provider reported a rise in third-quarter profit on rebounding volumes and cost cuts. And shares of Boeing fell after factory workers voted to reject a contract offer and continue a more than five-week-long strike. The stock is down roughly 38 percent year-to-date. Unilever and Danone beat third quarter results estimates after the company stored price hikes and reported a spike in sales volumes. Both firms maintain their 2024 sales outlooks. Business activity across the Eurozone has stalled again this month. That's according to a closely watched survey, the Purchasing Managers Index. Activity remained contracted as demand from both home and abroad fell, despite firms barely increasing prices. The PMI reading was slightly up in October at 49.7 from September's 49.6. But for the second straight month, it remained below the 50 mark, which separates growth from contraction. It also came in lower than analysts' expectations, with one remarking that the PMI's slight increase from September came from an easing contraction in manufacturing. But that was, quote, hardly something to cheer about. Business activity in Germany, Europe's largest economy, shrank in October but less steeply than in September, according to its PMI. In France, the dominant services sector contracted at its sharpest rate in seven months, dragged down by sluggish new orders. The PMI for Britain, outside the European Union, showed businesses reported their slowest growth in 11 months. Also, hiring shrank for the first time this year, as uncertainty ahead of the Labour government's first budget dampened confidence. That's all from us on the Nightly Business Report for today. We'll see you again on Monday with the latest updates in the business globe. Until then, I am Salim Mudal Naika. Thank you for watching. Good night.